Hello, and welcome to Lesson 9 of our Let's Learn the Bible, the Gospel series. Uh, if you're new to these videos, um, this is a, a teaching aid that I'm producing to help our parents teach their children um, the stories of the Bible. And we're currently going through a second workbook um, that is focused on the four Gospels and stories from those regarding Jesus and his ministry. And we are on Lesson 9. And so, uh, in your book, you'll notice that you can choose to read from uh, Matthew 4 or Mark 1 or Luke 5 uh, to tell the story of Jesus calling his first disciples. As I have and will continue to encourage you as a parent, um, before you do this with your child, uh, sit down yourself and read over all three of the accounts there. And my recommendation uh, is actually to teach uh, from Luke's account as it, it highlights a few more details um, that kind of just add to the story uh, and I think will be very helpful uh, for your children and, and for you as well. And so I'm going to read that to you this morning. Uh, in Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1, it says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, uh, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little further from the land, uh, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So that's a pretty smart thing to do, right? The crowd's pushing in on him, and so to give himself a bit of distance, and if you've ever, you know, we're Nova Scotian here, um, so hopefully you spent some time out on, on lakes, uh, but man, noise travels. One area that I often find myself paddling across and going into the woods, there's, there's a golf course and there's been times where I've thought as I'm in the woods, there's gotta be someone by my boat and I'll go out cause it sounds like they're right there, but they're, you know, they're 400 yards away. Um, but the sound just seems to carry on water so well. So, so Jesus goes in this boat uh, of Simon, also known as Peter, um, goes in his boat and they go out a little bit from, from the land and he continues to teach. And so this accomplishes two things. It gives Jesus um, a better vantage point to the crowd. But another thing that he did with this was he isolated Simon and his brother um, and, and, you know, they were washing their nets. They were preoccupied doing something. And he asks them to aid them in, in going out. And so now they're stuck out there, basically, having to take in his lesson. No longer washing their nets, um, but listening to the teaching of Christ at a front row seat. As close as you could get, basically. So, uh, continues. Uh, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took in nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. <coughs> oh. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partner in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. So some information for you. Uh, the lake here is, is a lake that a lot of Jesus' ministry was around, around that region. It was a very, very large lake, and it housed a lot of fish, to the point where fishing really was, was quite the industry for this area. Um, and if you were a successful fisherman, you could do quite well for yourself. And so these men are fishing, they're in, they're doing their maintenance, cleaning their nets. They had probably, well, not probably, they had been out all night long beforehand, 
uh, fishing and hadn't really caught very much. And so they were probably rather deterred uh, as a recreational angler. Um, when I go out and I'm out for a long period of time and I don't catch anything, I get kind of cranky about it. Um, and for someone who's doing that, not just for kicks, but for your income, I can imagine how uh, upset they would be at the lack of progress in their, in their efforts. And so Jesus is teaching and they're stuck on the boat with him, listening to his teaching. And he says to them, you know, let's, let's go out further and put out your nets. And Simon basically says, well, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> master, we have toiled all night and took in nothing. But he recognizes, you know, he calls him master. He recognizes there's some level of authority that Jesus has. Um, you know, he's probably maybe in the back of his head, he's thinking, you know, stay in your lane, rabbi. Like you're not an angler. You're not a fisherman. This isn't your trade. But he has respect for him as a rabbi as a teacher. And so he says, okay, we'll, we'll go out and we will do that. And what happens is, is the kind of story that a fisherman would, would tell over and over and over. Like, like you have these moments in your life, the, these big picture moments, and you can think about, you know, someone who's, who has whatever trade and, and they finally get like this massive contract and it, it, it makes their company. Or, you know, in this case, you have the, these fishermen and they're doing well. They have their boat and like, you know, they're, they seem to be okay in, in what they're doing. But this is the kind of catch that can like really make, uh, make their career and, and really push them forward and really help them. I mean, they have to call their other, their companions, their other partners, um, there are other fishermen to come out and help lift the net up. And as they're doing it, like both boats are starting to go down and like they're astonished at this catch and just overwhelmed with the fact that, like this doesn't, it, it, it wouldn't seem real. It, it, it would seem like something out of a dream that you're having. But Peter's response is perfect because while the other fishermen are, are overwhelmed with the fish, Peter is overwhelmed with Christ. And says that he falls at Jesus' knees and says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Do you notice the difference there? Okay, Master, we'll go out and, and we'll do what you asked. And then, like, just, I, you can't be near me. I'm not worthy. Depart from me, my Lord. I am sinful. There's, there's a huge difference uh, in the language and in the attitude there. Um, as, as Peter, you know, he, he knew he was in front of a teacher. He knew he was with a rabbi. And even today, you know, as a pastor, there, there's times where you'll go to someone's house. And, and uh, you know, I, I went on a moose hunt a number of years ago. And our guide, <laughs> great guy, but every time like a, a local would come up, he'd, he'd rush out and be like, just so you know, there, there's a minister here. And, 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 and there's a sense of respect, but also a sense like, you know, you're not, you're not being, you're guarding yourself and you're, you're being very aware of your conduct for, for certain reasons. And this would have been even more so in this situation, but they were still comfortable around him. Um, and then when he realized that there's something drastically different about this man, like he, he just controlled nature there. He just made something happen that never happens. No one has ever caught a, a catch like this, especially at this time of day in this area to start sinking boats because of the weight of the fish. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, and so he recognizes the magnitude of who this man is, at, at least at some level. He says, you know, re remove yourself from me. I'm sinful. I, I'm, you know, you are too good to be around us kind of thing. And Jesus' response, as always, is, is just simply beautiful. Do not be afraid. From, on, from now on, you will be uh, catching men. And then in the other two ones, uh, sections of text, so in Mark 1, um, it, it's, very sh it's, it's much shorter. 
In verse 16, passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brothers of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, this the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, who were in their boat, many their nets, and immediately he called to them and their fathers. And they left their father Zebedee and his boat with the hired servants and followed them. So, um, so some things to highlight here, first of all, is the power that Jesus has over the natural world. Um, a lot of the times we can come into a situation, your children might come into a situation where something's happening and they feel hopeless. And what we need to be able to remind them of is that as Christians, we are never hopeless and that we have Christ and that Christ is no mere man, um, but he is God. And if he says to the fish, jump in the net, they will jump in the net. As we'll see later on, if, if he says that this bread is going to defy the laws of physics and multiply, it will. If he says that this storm is to be calmed, it will be calmed. If he says to a dead man, stand up, he will be alive and he will stand up. And so we, we have this, uh, this relationship with God, and we know that there's nothing that is outside of his power. Like he, he has control, and, and we need to know that. We need to know that he has control over the natural world. Um, and also the sense of reverence um, that Peter had for Christ is appropriate. That when we come before God, we should recognize that he is holy, that he is righteous, um, and that we are. We are sinful now. We know that we have freedom from our sin through the forgiveness of Christ, through the work on the cross. Um, the response to recognizing the Christ. They get back to the shore. And what do they do? Think about this. They just had the catch of a lifetime. And they leave it. Who knows what happened to those fish? Someone else took them to market. And in, in, in moments ago, as, as the net was filling up with fish, all that was going through their mind was, it's payday. Like, we are going to be rich. And then all of that wealth, as they realized who was in the boat with them, became worthless. And in following Christ, and this is something you should know, and this is something you should teach to your children, in following Christ there's going to be things that society deems as valuable, that he calls us to walk away from. And it is so wonderful to walk away from those things because the one we are walking after is the most valuable. It makes the treasures of the world look like dirt. And so to emphasize, they left their boats. They left their jobs. They left these things that were established to go and follow Christ and to become the fisher of men. And so the question, first of all, comes, what does it mean to follow Christ? To follow Christ. So, it, you know, you have a phone, most likely, and you have some form of social media, most likely. Take Instagram, for example, and you can follow someone on Instagram. That's not even remotely close, but, but I can have some idea of what that person is doing and, and what they're all about. And, and maybe even, you know, if it's a teacher or a philosopher or something, I can have some idea of, of the things that they teach, but I'm not following them truly. Um, as, as these men followed Christ, it was, we are walking after you. We are devoted to you. And we are leaving everything we held dear behind in following you. How were they to fish for men? I remember when I was a kid, we were in Ontario on vacation. And we were fishing on the dock. And as a kid, I cast back. And I went to cast my rod forward. And it snagged because I hooked my younger brother in the back of his head. Biggest catch of my life. Um, that's not at all what they were talking about and uh, at, at all. But 
you know, to be a fisher of men, to pursue people, to bring them into the kingdom of God, to introduce them to God. Um, it, it's a wonderful phrase. It, it's, a, it's a term that I, I really enjoy, to be a fisher of men, to be an evangelist, to be a teacher, a proclaimer of the gospel, to be a soul miner um, uh, is another phrase that has been used that kind of has the same idea. But uh, that, you know, in, in fishing, which is one of my great hobbies, uh, you present something to the fish. You cast out a worm or you put down a net. Um, but as, as a recreational angler, I'll, I'll cast out a worm or a cinco or a lure of some sort. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll twitch the rod in certain ways to make the lure look uh, appetizing to uh, the fish. And then they grab onto it and, and then I eat them um, <laughs> if I can get them into the boat. But, um, but in, in how do we fish for men? We present the gospel to them. And if they see it for what it actually is, and they grab onto it, and they meet God, and they recognize that, and it hooks on to them, um, instead of them losing life, as a fish does when it goes into the net, they actually receive life. And we are called to be fisher of men. We have been given the good news. We have received the truth. We know God. And we know what it is to be free um, from sin. And we know what it is to have the thing that makes everything else that is so valuable seem so little in comparison to knowing God. And so we are able to present that to them. Now, the disciples walked with Christ for three years uh, and as that went on, you know, they, they got better and better at their understanding. And so the expectation is not that your eight-year-old son is to be a polished preacher, but that he grows in his understanding of God and that you also grow in your understanding of God and you become better at casting out the net and, uh, and that you would cast out your net and that your child, yes, would cast out his net, um, which, which seems like an event, right? And there are times where it's an event. I get up on a Sunday or I'll make a video like this and, and we're, we're doing something that's deliberate. But it's also, you know, there's always the, the net that's always out as a Christian where we're living and, and our life is an example to those around us. Um, a suggested activity is that on paper, print out or trace outlines of fish and on each fish write a godly characteristic that we can have as Christians to help us become better fishers of men. You know, if you have a lure that's been beat up against the rocks and it's all rough, one of the things you can do is you can repaint it and you can uh, fix it up. When we become Christians and God grows the fruit of the Spirit within us, we become more different from the people of the world, um, but we reflect God better. And so it, it, it should become more of an attractive to those who are uh, looking for God. Uh, this week we have a family devotional, and so you can read through, once again, read through that beforehand, and then read through it with your children, and talk to your children about that, spend some time in prayer. And then there's a, a two-pager, big old coloring page there, that you can go through with your child. Oh, you don't go through with your child, but your child can spend time coloring that. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Uh, hope you have a great week and honor God in all that you do. And I know fishing season is basically over, but next year, uh, if you and your kids wanna go fishing, uh, hit me up and we will spend some time out on the lake because uh, we are called to be fisher of men, uh, but we can also fish for some fish. Have a great week.